I'm joined by Congressman Joe Crowley, the National Urban League President and CEO Mark Morial, and two analysts who are former aides to the Hillary Clinton campaigns, Erlena Maxwell and Adrian Elrod. Appreciate you all being here. Uh, Congressman, are you more concerned about the tax changes or the gutting of the Obamacare mandate? I, th I think that they are both atrocious. In, in terms of what they have in store for the American people. Uh, on one end, using the tax bill uh, to really hide an availed attempt to hide what they're doing on Obamacare. The American people get exactly what they're doing here. What it really says, Ari, is that the Republicans have never seen a tax bill they don't love, even if it means taking away health care away from 13 million Americans. How Susan Collins or any of those senators that stood up and said they wouldn't do this are doing it now under the guise of, of, of a, a tax of a tax cut is just absolutely outrageous. As we're speaking, and I know you've been out and around the floor busy all day on the Senate side, uh, we're looking at a live picture of Senator Murkowski. Uh, I was just reporting on what her office said. Um, do you buy her explanation that it's apples and oranges this time to gut Obamacare? Absolutely not. Taking away the, the mandate is every attempt to take away Obamacare. It means that 13 million people will not have insurance now. And, and to, to do this all for a payoff, the payoff was Anwar. She got the drilling. She got what she wants. And that was her price to sell out uh, the Affordable Care Act and the American people. Uh, and then on the, on the White House side, you have the odd and, and unusual scenario of a president openly boasting about how this is going to affect his taxes when he won't release his tax returns. Here was Sarah Huckabee Sanders today. Look, we expect um, that it likely will, certainly on the personal side, uh, could cost the president a lot of money. Uh, Congressman, number one, they can't prove that because they won't show the returns. Number L two, likely will. <laughs> <laughs> number two, uh, I'll put up on the screen for the fact check and then get your response. Um, to the extent that we know some c circumstantial things about his status, the view mm -hmm. is that he could save up to a uh, hundred million over a, over a decade on, on this bill. There's no question that uh, the Trumps of the world, including President Trump and his family, will see enormous benefits from this tax cut. You know, the LLC, Limited Liability Corporations, what they do for, uh, for uh, pass-through entities, we know is going to bring their rate down to about 20 percent for most of their earnings. Uh, so the president and his family are, are laughing their way to the bank, as are many members of the Senate. I'm very disappointed to see Mr. Senator Corker switch his vote. I think that's a sad day for Tennessee, but also for him himself personally. I admired his, uh, his stance in voting against it, and now he's, he's reversed that. And I think it's, it's, it's wrong for Tennesseans, and it's wrong for the American people. Uh, Congressman, stay with me. I'm going to whip it sure. around to the panel here. I've got some people who've thought and worked on these issues a lot. Um, but starting with you, Mark, you look at the cities, you look at uh, urban communities and communities of color, which you have focused on through your organization. Um, double whammy and the Obamacare part has not gotten enough attention it seems. It's really a triple whammy and it's a stink bomb for the American people cooked up in a cave because there's been no transparency, no hearings, no deliberate process to pull this off. Number one, the tax provisions itself uh, will benefit disproportionately the one percent in ways that have been discussed uh, significantly. It is though uh, if we had ten sandwiches to serve one person would get eight Mm. and the remaining nine would share two. That's the essence of the tax provisions of this bill. Number two, the poison pill in the budget resolution, which is we'll cut one and a half trillion dollars out of domestic spending and uh, people programs like Medicaid, Medicare, and Social Security is what's coming next. And now third, there's the repeal of the individual mandate. This is a bad deal, and I predict that the American people are going to be heard on this beginning immediately. Uh, we've done eight minutes of substance. That's a lot. I get tired if I do too much <laughs> substance. I'm going to go to you on the politics. Yeah. Uh, does this help the Democrats if this is the way it all goes down? I think so, because I think in the short term, the Republicans can claim a win as if this is a game. And on the policy front, um, politically, uh, Democrats have an argument to make that they have just made it a lot more difficult for you and your family members. And so the individual mandate is what made the bill work in the first place. It is the portion of the bill that requires you sign up for health insurance. And the reason why this is important, you know, there's a lot of um, talk uh, among political journalists about, well, if healthy people won't sign up. They mean men. 
because women at reproductive age, which um, or as soon as you are starting to have sex when you are a teenager, usually around 17 or 18 years old, um, and through your reproductive years, you have to go to the doctor. You have to go get your annual checkup. And so women do not actually have a choice to mm. not go to the mm -hmm. doctor. And so the individual mandate is what keeps premiums down for because everyone has to sign up, and so you're not having pools of just sick people. Right, and you mentioned that about a bill that, of course, also in other ways dealt with uh, gender discrimination exactly. that had been stitched into the, mm -hmm. to the U.S. Code. I want to play a Nancy Pelosi today who really put it starkly, and again, we, it, one of the dangers of this whole era is being exhausted uh, by hyperbole, but this is yeah. what, this is what uh, the former speaker said here on the floor. This is the worst bill to ever come to the floor of the House with stiff competition for some of the things they've tried to do, mm -hmm. the worst bill in history. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think Leader Pelosi is absolutely spot on on this. And a lot of what the, the, the real issue that we have here is we don't exactly still know what is right. in this bill. Right. I mean, I think it was Senator Inhofe today who said, to one of his, to a reporter, um, hey, I'm going to go read the bill that I just voted on, um, <laughs> which is which is kind of ridiculous. Um, but but look, I you know Leader Pelosi is right. I think you know going forward in the next few months, we'll really find out what is in, in this bill. Um, but what we do know at this point is that they wrote notes in the you know columns of the bill in the, mm -hmm. in the dark of the night. The process was not transparent. There was not a standard committee process for this bill, and this is a huge bill. This is a huge piece of leg legislation so to not go through a standard committee process is appalling. Well, and you make the point I want to I want to get back to the congressman on because uh, uh, congressman look there are a lot of different ways uh, to deal with something like this we talked about what's in it uh, I don't think the procedural issues are the most important front of mind for Americans uh, but it does seem, it does seem to me telling uh, you know the old saying you had one job I mean the Republicans this is the only thing they've done all year and the right. way they're doing it after this dramatic vote with the big speech from Paul Ryan requires a revote, uh, does that yeah. tell us anything uh, about how this is I going? I think it does. <laughs> I, mean, I think it does. I can't tell you how many reporters have stopped me today and asked me whether or not I or Democrats would cooperate with, cor with, with corrections that are going to be made or need to be made. And that's before we even knew about the revote. So the revote tomorrow is an indicator right away of how flawed this legislation is. Forget the process. It's what's in the bill, mm -hmm. how flawed it is. And already they have to revote. We know they're going to need a lot of help in terms of making corrections here. And, you know, it's interesting to see how, how uh, or if Democrats are going to be willing to uh, work with them to correct this, this behemoth of a, 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 a terrible bill. As Nancy said, uh, one of the worst bills, if not the worst bill, to ever hit the floor of the House. Mark, go ahead. Mary, go back to the beginning when the GOP promised a bill which would save middle class taxpayers money. It doesn't. Promise a more simplified tax code. It isn't. Promise to close loopholes. They created more. That's a test that they flunk. And they also flunk the Tip O'Neill Ronald Reagan test. Uh, when Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan did their historic 86 deal, uh, they did two things. One, they agreed it would be a bipartisan undertaking, which it was. And they also agreed that it would be revenue neutral, which it was. This bill is neither. So in many respects, it is a travesty. Uh, on the American people, but it's also a travesty of governance uh, in the 21st century that they would ram through this. What is this really all about? We have to pay back our donors. Mm -hmm. This is a win yeah. for the GOP donor class, period, exclamation point. Yeah. Uh, Congressman Crowley, thank you for joining us uh, from thank down you. there. Mark Morial and Zillian Maxwell, thank you both. And